this team playing special teams for a reason might be his ticket to being on the 53. So bringing it out for Seattle, Dean Williams. He was just beyond the goal line. He's got a nice seam there along the right side. And almost brought that one out to the 40-yard line. So the league wants to see more kickoffs, and the Seattle side will like that kickoff there. Tackle made by Elijah Molden. And D. Williams, a Tennessee volunteer back in his home state with a big return to get things started for Seattle. Said like you're a former Tennessee volunteer yourself, Charles. You know some? I, 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 yes, I am. The time off based off of how they played joint practices at North Carolina. Kenny McIntosh, the tailback next to him. Wait. Throws one completion is flared out to the left. Nice job there on the perimeter by the Titans defense to keep that to just a gain of one. Eric Garner, first one there. Yeah, the tackle on it, Chenault. Looked like Elijah Molden was there as well. Number 24, a veteran on this team, trying to find his way in a secondary that in recent weeks has added Quandre Diggs, has added Jamal Adams, guys who play his position at safety. As Sam Howell threw for over 303 touchdowns in a two-point loss when he was playing for Washington at Seattle in early November. They took note because a trade later, he is now lining up starting here for the Seahawks in his third season. McIntosh remains the tailback. His first carry, a little hesitation, and once again, second play in a rumble. Oh, it's defense. amazing how it works out, right? Corey Curtis talked about defense. him in the open, as well as Otis Reese. Second Both play in a rumble. on search and destroy missions in the middle of the field. The backups to prove they Wilson saying during the week, do belong be better on this team. Down. Start their first chance, and they come through. Seahawks, first time with the ball, go three and out. And I think I saw Otis Reese 41, and Chance Campbell, 45, both come at linebacker. And yes, they brought the pressure. Watch in here, watch in here. And look who's there right on the machine. Chance Campbell making Sam Howell alter his throwing motion and forces the incompletion. Denard, Williams, Denard Wilson, the defense coordinator, always aggressive. None, so, none more so than right now on third down. Getting a good look there. One of the rookie draft picks, Jaquan Jackson. Brian Callahan used a couple of good E words to describe him. Electric, explosive when we talked to him yesterday. And he wants to add elusive in there as well if he can. Nice punt. Well, that was really well played by Michael Dixon. Pinning that one out of bounds. They see if they give him inside the 10 almost. And they continue to walk that one out right there at the 15-yard line. So Jaquan Jackson will have to wait to get his first touch after 41-yard punt in no return. So as Charles talked about at the top of the show, starting at quarterback Malik Willis, it was fun listening to head coach Brian Callahan yesterday talk about the fact that he has earned the right to get some time with the twos. He did point out Mason Rudolph does have an edge right now. He would be the number two as it stands, but he wants him to get time with the backups. He'll play in the first quarter and the third. Julius Chestnut, the tailback to his left. Play action to him. Comes back to his second option, and that is Chestnut out of the backfield. Good cutback. And he gets out to the 29-yard line. One play and one first down from Willis to Chestnut for 15. Brian Callahan talked about this young man, Malik Willis, and how far he's come since he first saw him at OTAs. Footwork, timing, ability to deliver the ball with good placement, and also how they've been working on him to make sure running the football is the last resort, not the first resort. Paul, we saw every bit of that on that play right there with Malik Willis. Said he wants to see his mind continue to calm like he did right there to go from the first read to the second to the third. His night off to a good start. First and ten, toss sweep. And not much there this time to set us up for tonight. To catch the football, but surprising ability to move people off the line of scrimmage while blocking. Yeah, pleasantly surprised at how physical he has been in his first camp. That's Chestnut in motion to the left, now back to the right on second and long. He gets the carry again up the middle, makes one man miss and some harder yards up there to the 32. And Brian Callahan told us he had a really strong couple of days against the Seahawks in the joint practices. Charles, you were there as well. And he said he's really starting to separate himself as a very good runner. He really is. And I think what it's come down to, because you've mentioned before, Paul, who's going to be the third running back here, right? And the competition right now appears to be between Chestnut and Hassan Haskins. Chestnut, the better ball carrier, the better overall running back. Hassan Haskins, the better special teams player. How will that break down in the final valuation for the Tennessee Titans? Titans were really good on third down in preseason game number one. And as I say that, we have movement on the right side. Looks like a Juku from Boise. False start. Offense, number 61. 
It's a five yard penalty. Sure he was set up in pass Still third protection, down. That's for sure. <laughs> he, was, he was in a hurry. That's referee Greg Rolstad tonight. But as I mentioned before that, when it was third and seven, now it's going to be tougher on third and 12. But Tennessee was terrific on third down last week. Converted over half of the time. Tough one here on third and 12. Good yes. chance for Malik Willis, though. He's one for one. He's talked about. And he's in trouble there. there. Be the number. Goes down to the 10-yard line. And the third. Tried to slide the down to the left, but there was working. nothing there. Three Seahawks. And not there. much there. Led by Cam. From the offense, jogged to the sideline. Ty Zittner out. Number one. Tonight, that was a third and 12. 14 yards but Tennessee was terrific on third down last week. On that first possession, though, Tennessee did Three, pick up Greg Rolstad tonight. But as I mentioned, not Zintner's best effort end over end. Fair catch called for on the 37 yard line. And the NFL for great to actually catch up with him working to that Coach goal. Will. And now that it's finally here, no man is better than his opportunity, and he's ready to take advantage of it. Sam Howell on his second series here for Seattle in his first year as a Seahawk gives to McIntosh right up front. Keeping it with the big picture thought of the defense yeah. here in the first year for Denard Wilson, Charles. Brian Callahan told us yesterday, I, I said, what did you really like about the week that you spent with the Seahawks? He said, physicality up front in particular he thinks we're going to be a handful on that defensive line and he's talking about of course jeffrey simmons to vandre sweat and what they did with seattle up front and this is going to be look an attacking defense a lot of press coverage they're going to play with a lot of effort and they did that against san francisco they just want to get a little bit better in this one refine what they call their eye discipline their techniques and their fundamentals but continue to play awfully hard linebacker blitz coming that was chance campbell did it so well in week one penalty marker is down here's craig Wolstad. False start. Offense. Number 64. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That's one aside. Yeah, that's the big rookie out of UConn, Christian Haynes. Put senior bowl. A little bit unorthodox. And for Tennessee fans, I'm not, I'm not I know you're not gonna watch him much. The passing game coordinator when he was here in Tennessee. A little bit unorthodox, but the job gets done and can be a real mauler in the run game. Sam Howell started all 17 games for the commanders last year. Uh, yeah. Four-man rush. In trouble as he tries to step up. Fumble the football. Scrum forward on the 21-yard line. It looks like Seattle got in there to get it. And Jalen Harrell, the seventh-round rookie, the linebacker out of Michigan, was the one to knock the ball out. Remember what Brian Callahan told us about him before week one? Like what he's done in practice? Want to see him prove it now when you take it to the game. And what did he do there? Ran right over the offensive tackle, Stone Forsythe. Watch him right down here. Just runs right over Forsythe and continues his way back to the quarterback. So if Brian Callahan had questions, is he going to prove it? Jalen Harrell's trying to show that on film. Sam Harrell on third and forever. 25 to be exact out to his right. Still looking to keep it himself and run out of bounds. And just like we saw last week, Charles, that's a linebacker blitz from Denard Wilson's group with T.K. McClendon with the pursuit there, getting it done for Tennessee. The pressure up front, but the coverage on the back end was tremendous. Everywhere I looked for a white jersey, all I saw was the Columbia Blue. Everyone attached to them, as they say in the defensive parlance, plastered to the receivers. Nowhere for Sam Howell to fit the football in. Did the smart, prudent thing and went over the sideline. Get a look at Jaquan Jackson. Electric and explosive, as Brian Callahan said to us yesterday. First time they punted away from him. Remember, he had the 26-yard return in San Francisco last week. Now he goes with a fair catch. Defensive parlay. On the 32-yard line. Punt of Flemis not playing tonight. And for the first time at running back, we get a peek at Jamari Small. Jabari, play action fake, good catch right there. And a Tennessee first down, Mason Kinsey in his fifth camp with the Titans having his best go yet, gets 14 there. Corey Curtis, as we watch this replay, Mason Kinsey, I call him the people's choice or the people's champ. I think he's got his best chance to make this team this year. And Charles, I do think that's the consensus. Here, and as we mentioned, his fifth camp gets a catch now, and Malik starts out two for two. Jabari Small from Tennessee, undrafted free agent, play action to him. Willis, nice pocket, floats one, and just missed a wide open Nick Westbrook-Akine. He won't get much more open than that. Not at all, and those are the ones you've got to rip and hit, Paul. 
your former quarterback, you understand, especially when you're competing for a possibility of a job, meaning backup quarterback, QB2. Every opportunity that's there, take it, hit it, especially when you've got an experienced receiver like Westbrook Akine on the field. Brian Callahan, awfully complimentary of Westbrook Akine yesterday. Said he has all kinds of value because he can play every position. He's consistent. He's dependent for your fourth or fifth wide receiver. And he was wide open there. Second down 10. Check Away from him. Didn't Every quite get out to the 32-yard line. line. And that'll set up third down and eight. At the tight end. Corey, as we get ready for third down and eight, Mason Kinsey I brought up before. We just talked about Nick Westbrook Akine. How about the battle for receiver spots on this team? Well, the big question is six or seven, and then they're Are breaking it down to a couple of guys. Titan. And, of course, we're talking about special teams. I think Nick Westbrook Kikine is safely on this football team. But, One and you know, I had a guy describe to me Mason Q Kinsey this way. To value because he, he can play. If the apocalypse was coming, he's hanging out on a number 12 because <laughs> that dude's a survivor. And he did not back down at practice all week long. He was a handful and an earful for the Seahawks, and he's had a great camp, and he can also return punts. Yeah, no doubt about it, as we see the call go against the Tennessee Titans. It cost him five yards. Exact same thing we saw in the first possession. Yeah, so it 37 was, to 3rd and 12. It was a Juku on the right side. Was that Jaron Christian on the left side this time? I believe at left tackle. Jalen Duncan. Jalen Duncan, excuse yeah. me. Jalen Duncan, the second-year player out of Maryland. But Corey's right about these receivers. And Mason Kinsey, he didn't back down at all against Seattle. Talked a little trash while he was out there making plays. Willis in trouble, has to fire that one toward Westbrook Akine. So they missed the connection on the wide open Westbrook Akine. Then they have the five-yard penalty. Pressure gets to him there, and the punt team coming out. Someone better think about blocking this guy right here, number 53, Boye Mafe. Really good play. Look how relentless he is. And then look at him gain ground and close. Good job by Malik Willis sensing who he was, sensing him being there and getting rid of the football to no harm. Ty Zittner out for his second punt of the night. High, not quite a spiral down to the inside the 15 from the 13. Dean Williams, nice cutback. In trouble, though. Gets out to the seat. You do the same thing week two against Aaron Rodgers, who's seen everything. It's going to be a fun game of cat and mouse for Denard Wilson and his defense. Defense has been awfully good so far. They've forced a pair of three and outs. See it? Seattle's only had the ball twice. Well, he had a man in his face that time. Did Howell. Good job of getting the completion out to the 20 yard line. I feel like the ball got tipped. I think it got affected because of what you were talking about. Let's take a look here and see what happens. Looks like Jalen Harrell again. And I think he got a piece of it. And somehow Sam Howell had enough arm strength to get it out there as he runs the route against Trey Avery. And somehow they got a completion despite the pressure by Harrell. Brian Callahan, when I asked him yesterday, Charles, what position group, like where will your eyes go first on defense? He didn't hesitate. He said my young linebackers. Right here in the middle. James Williams, Jalen Harrell. Second down five. Here comes another blitz. Campbell didn't get there in time. Nice job by Howell getting that one out. And that'll be Seattle's first first down just across the 30-yard line to LaVisca Chenault. Gain of eights. Yeah, and, and, Her and look, Howell read that one with a few passes along the way. You're not going to just shut them out. But when they do hit one, the next guy has to be there to cover first teammate. Chance Campbell leading tackler last week at a tackle for loss. Had the game-ending interception and a good two days against the Seahawks during the week. Little fly sweep around the left side, and a nice job by Chanel to break in tackles. But the Titans were there to keep that to a short gain out to the 33. This is against the Seahawks. He's unfortunately out for the season. So that depth will be tested there. In fact, in just yesterday, Journeyman, who's played for five different teams, he'll get some action tonight. He wears number 78 after that injury to Davidson. Draw sweep to the right side. The Titans pursued pretty heavy out there around the corner. Holani, the ball carried. Chance Campbell was there, and he got there with authority. Game I think three to bring up third and short. Corey Curtis is going to see what happens. Looks like Jalen linebacker strength to get in. Make those now they got to come. Yeah, and they've got a real opportunity with Marlon Davis. The vacated down spot. The season. One guy I'm looking at is big TK McClendon. Just a former tight end line. at LSU. Now a defensive lineman put on 15 now pounds what? this offseason, up to 295 pounds. And we saw the big finish last week uh, by, by Keandre Do Coburn. Hit. Those are nice. guys with a real chance to play now with that opening in the lineup. McClendon wearing Jamal 96, was there. Coburn 91. I'll guarantee you, Paul McClendon will tell you he could still play tight end. Third down and two. More linebacker blitz. Good job by Howell. This is a first down. Seattle just inside of Tennessee territory. Evaded the blitz and found A.J. Barner. 
rookie out of Michigan, one of the many good players coming out in the draft from Ann Arbor. He got 16. Yeah, pretty sure that Denard Wilson, the defensive coordinator, and then, of course, Frank Bush, the linebacker's coach, what they will say in the meeting after that play, hey, if we're going to send you to get you home, you got to finish it off. You can't miss him in the pocket like that because that creates those types of plays, and they gave up a first down. So Seattle didn't pick up a single first down, Charles, in their first two drives. That was their second on this. Now they set up shop inside of Tennessee territory. First down and 10. Right up the middle, they find success against that depleted defensive line. That's the third first down on this drive. This time down to the 33 after a gain of 13. And this was something that Denard Wilson talked about with, with us, Paul, that he wanted to help clean up from last week. What he calls leaky yardage. Everything was blocked up so well on that play by Seattle that the ball carrier wasn't pressed until he got to the third level, until he got to the secondary. That's not something you want to see. You need your defensive front to at least slow him down, and he started to make a play on him by the second level where the linebackers are. Elijah Molden, the safety, made the stop. Fourth-year player out of Washington. And they try it again. This time, more success as they bounce it out to the left. And they get inside the 25-yard line. Just enough for another first down. Kenny McIntosh on back-to-back -back runs, basically between the tackles. Games That one got him 11. Paul, I thought the defensive front did a nice job initially because they stacked it. Uh, up. One guy I'm looking at is by McIntosh. You see that the gap was on the left side. He wanted side. to help clean up from last he week. To the right. he, wanted, he took his eyes left, and the Yard back side uh, uh, deep defender not up on the line of scrimmage and allowed McIntosh access to the secondary. No score yet here in Tennessee. Second preseason game for the Seahawks and the Titans. Sam Howell and Seattle threatening here. First down and 10 on the 24. Nice pocket to the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Aesop Winston Jr. out of Washington State makes it 6 0 Seahawks. That was blocked really well by Seattle. No pressure on Sam Howell, and he threw a perfect pass to Aesop Winston. Look up front. No one even close to number six in the backfield, and he put a perfect ball on number 13, Aesop Winston Jr., right over the shoulder of Trey Avery. Boy, Sam Howell couldn't have thrown that ball any better. You pointed it out, Charles. That was pretty right on the money. He had half a step on Avery, and the ball was dropped right in his bread basket. First touchdown of the night. And the extra point from Jason Myers. Whoa! A little tail there at the end. A doink. Hello, upright. Remember, he's a two-time thousand-yard receiver in Cincinnati before, uh, before he ended up getting a couple guys who showed up, right? Yeah. <laughs> One guy named Jamar Chase. Pretty good. Made it a little bit tougher for him. And we believe that Malik Willis, who, yes, he will come out. He gets the whole first quarter with 109 left. And a little more on Tyler Boyd, Tyler Boyd, Charles. What I really like about him is sometimes a guy who's been a really strong piece of a good offense goes to a new place. He's expected to be the number one guy. Yeah. Well, he was great as a three. Yes. And it's, it's pretty much the same role here. And it's not bothering him either. He was the number one receiver. Then T. Higgins showed up. He became the number two receiver. Jamar Chase showed up. He became number three receiver. Never heard a peep out of him. No loss of play. No loss of playing hard. He comes to Tennessee knowing he would be the three guy. Not bothering him one bit. Up to the 31-yard line goes Julius Chestnut in that battle with Hassan Haskins to be the third back behind Spears and Pollard. Neither, neither one of them will play here tonight. You know, you have Julius Chestnut. He was outstanding at Sacred Heart, a 1AA yep. school. And he's going up against Hassan Haskins of uh, Michigan. They both excelled on their levels and now in a competition to be that third guy in the backfield as we're now inside a minute Back. left in the first quarter. And as you noted before, Jabari Small is getting a little notice too out of Tennessee. Nice step Receiver. up there by Willis. Be the three guy. Go ahead and keep it yourself. Third he's back behind. Slip right near Snow, he was sticks out. there. He's going to be about a And he's going up against short. Hassan. Nice job of getting down. Gain of eight. Remember, we saw Will Levis hit, take that giant hit at the goal line last week, and Malik said no thanks. Yeah, that talked with Nick Holes, the offensive coordinator, about that hit that Will Levis took last week. And he said, what were you doing? And Levis said, Coach, I like to get hit and get into the game. And Holt said, not like that, not again. Don't do that. Says we like to, to keep you in the game. <laughs> we want to have you around. And that'll do it here for the first quarter. And Malik Willis.